Hi, and good morning. My name is Catherine Sullivan de Carlo, and I am Vice President of Admissions and Marketing at Chapel Haven Schleifer Center. And I am delighted that you chose to join us for our presentation, Getting Ready Life After High School. And for our agenda today, um, we are going to talk basically about life after high school. We are going to cover, um, first of all, we're gonna hear from a panel of our own adults with their experiences um, transitioning from high school into um, really their ongoing adult life here at Chapel Haven. And they have some interesting insights to share for what they went through to get ready to have their own independent life. Um, we're also going to talk about um, some tips on how you can build greater independence for young adults while they're still in high school. And we are going to have a, um, some tips from our consulting director of education on how you can work with your school district team to plan a successful transition. And I'm just admitting some folks to the uh, presentation. Um, and then we will look at the kinds of programs that are out there after high school and uh, maybe how to visit them and get the information you need to make um, an informed decision. So I hope that you will feel free to um, put your questions in the chat and we'll pause every so often to see if you do have questions. Uh, I'd love for this to be um, an interactive panel if we can do that. So um, feel free to use the chat and I'll be keeping an eye on that. Okay, and this is just a, a slide showing our panelists who will be joining us and um, I'm delighted to have them. And just a note that a couple of our adults are here in the conference, conference room with me and they are masked. I'm unmasked at this point, um, but we'll have them come over to my computer and I'll step away so that they can talk and then they'll go back and we're all socially distanced. Uh, so we are observing our protocols. And we have been here at Chapel Haven since the beginning of the pandemic and knock on wood or whatever formaldehyde, whatever this thing is. Um, we've been pretty successful at minimizing uh, any spread at all of, of COVID. So we feel very fortunate, but we've been very strict. So for those of you who don't know about Chapel Haven, we are a nonprofit. We're located here in the Westville section of New Haven, and we are celebrating our 50th year. So the big 5-0, we have been doing what we do, which is helping adults learn how to live independent and self-determined lives since 1972, so 50 years. Um, and we got our name because we started on Chapel Street here in the Westville section. And uh, that was in 1972. We started with six students and two staff and a dog. Um, and our adults uh, quickly learned that this section of New Haven called Westville is very walkable and very manageable. It's a vibrant community with uh, a lot of community partners here from the faith community to businesses to the JCC, et cetera. We're right on a bus line, several bus lines. Uh, so it's a great spot for learning how to live independently. So from our founding with the six students, we moved here to Whaley Avenue in 1976. And from our six student founding members, we now serve about 250 adults. So um, we have a flourishing campus here that we recently renovated. And um, we work with adults whose profiles include cognitive disabilities, Down syndrome, Asperger syndrome, autism, cerebral palsy, um, lots of people coming from lots of different backgrounds, but the unifying factor here is that these are adults who want to learn how to live on their own. And we help them to do that. And you can see that our website is chapelhaven.org. 
So I think we're going to start with Kimber. Uh, Kimber is a wonderful young lady who's been part of the Chapel Haven community for a number of years. And just for um, reference, she came here from um, Darien, Connecticut, and she came to Chapel Haven right out of high school. So she's one of our panelists who um, started right out of high school and she has uh, gone through our REACH program and gotten some lots of life skills training and lots of training in that program and then moved out into her own apartment where she lives now. And she lives right down the street from our campus. And I'm gonna have her come over and sit down and tell us a little bit about transitioning from high school and what that's been like for you, Kimber. Really excited to well, first of all, if you cheer up, if you can take your mask down okay. and introduce yourself okay. and tell us a little bit about your journey from high school to chapel here. Uh, hi, my name is Kimber. I'm from Darien, Connecticut, and I came to Chapel Haven in 2013 um, from a from Hope Academy. It's a private uh, school in Orange, Connecticut, and I came here straight after um, high school, and I uh, learned a lot. Um, I learned how to do laundry and cook and just, I guess, basically everything. Um, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what are some things that were new for you? You remember when we rehearsed, we talked about things you weren't doing in high school, but that you learned to do at chapel. I learned to cook, um, to do, basic needs, so like cleaning and managing an apartment, um, budgeting, uh, just things that were pretty new to me. Um, I learned that all here. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So let's go to your next slide. And tell us about your life today. You're a very busy lady. So what are you up to? Um, I uh, live by myself in an apartment that I moved in January of 2020. Um, so uh, kind of this in all of the, the COVID stuff. Um, I uh, I'm trying to think. How about your pageant? Pageants. Oh, yeah, I, um, I've been competing in pageants since 2010, um, and I have uh, participated in this amazing. It's a uh, pageant for girls with uh, disabilities, and I uh, first uh, joined in 2017, and um, I won, so I got to go to nationals, and then I competed again in 2019, so I got to go again, and then last year, I got to go again. So I've um, been very uh, thankful and lucky. So do you feel like one piece of advice and when you're thinking of moving out and making it is to be involved with something you're passionate about? Yeah. And what do you get out of the pageants? Uh, a lot of like self-confidence and I've met a lot of friends and um, just like, also, like I like to perform, so uh, I like, I like it's nice to go on stage and stuff. So that's also helpful. Um, and it's just like I've and I have you know spoken on stage and introduced myself, so that also helped. Um, yeah. And just one last question: Tell everybody about your job. I work at U Arts. Um, it is a place for the people at Chapel Haven to work. Um, and I've worked there since 2014, 15. Um, and I work Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, nine to two. And do you get paid? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You, and you manage your money. 
Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, thank you, Kimber. Apparently, we all had to come in this room. Okay. So, um, hopefully, you guys are hearing this, but if there's anything that you're not getting, I'm just going to check the chat. Can people private pay to live at Chapel Hill? Can people stay there? Yes. So, the question is um, can people private pay? And yes, our tuition uh, is private pay and also sometimes school district placement. Um, and what happens at Chapel Haven is like the example with Kimber, she came to Chapel Haven initially to enroll in our REACH residential program where she learned everything she talked about, how to manage money, how to cook, how to do laundry, uh, basically how to manage her adult life. But at Chapel Haven, after you've done that residential training, you have that option to move into our law, lifelong program. <clears throat> and so, Kimber, you've lived out in the community how many years? I moved out in 2016, 15. So she's been living in, in an apartment close to our campus for about, about seven years now. And she comes to campus for help where she needs the help. So she has a support coordinator and things like that. I hope that answers the question. I'm just going to check the chat. And what is the cost for one year? It depends on which program you enroll in. Um, the REACH program is um, approximately 75000 a year. Um, the ASAT or Asperger program has different pricing structure depending on the kinds of supports that you need. And remember that it's tuition based in the beginning when you're residential, but then when you move out into the community, it becomes um, more affordable in terms of just like a, a son or daughter would go off to college, they'd get their degree, and then they'd move into their own adult life. Um, it would be similar to that, except here, generally, it's a two-year college, and then, um, and then you're set up to be able to live with independence in our community for a lifetime. Okay. So uh, our next panelist is Jack, and he's uh, a first year student in our Asperger's Syndrome Adult Transition Program. And one thing that really helped him to get ready for a program like Chapel Haven was going to Camp SOAR in North Carolina. One second, I'm just gonna admit somebody here. Oops. So I'm gonna have Jack uh, take the seat here. Mm -hmm. And Jack, you can tell us a little bit about your experience. Um, I just want to admit this person here. Oh, there you go. Moving from high school to Chapel Haven and maybe talk about your camp experience. Yeah, um, I'm Jack. This is my first year at the ASAP program. Uh, before I, um, they, they were meant, like she was mentioning, the uh, camp SOAR is basically depending on which diff there's different uh, different things you can choose from like going backpacking or they used to have a high school like a summer school type thing but they don't do that anymore and then there's also um, other activities you can do and they kind of teach you to have they teach you to like work with other people to work work together plan different what activities you want to do that day, budget money that you have to spend on different activities that you want to do. And, I, and I've been going there for, I think, I think it was my third year and I plan on going next year as possibly a, um, I plan on possibly going there as a counselor next year for this summer. So one of the things we find with young adults is if they've had um, a camp experience away from home, it really does help them be ready for that next step in their trajectory. So Jack, what are some skills that you learned at camp that you think might have really helped you um, come to Chapel Haven? Um, well, a lot of the skills I've learned at the camp was like when you're when you're with the same group of people for a long period of time, you know, you can get some stress or something between them or and they, 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 the camp kind of like helps you to how to work with them, even if you don't really get along with them too well. Um, 
because being it's like the camp in total is I believe 26 days depending on which when you choose it's like three two to three weeks or so so waking up and seeing the same people every day can sometimes get a bit you know stressful um so we're they I've learned from there how to work with somebody even if you don't really get along with them too well and sometimes I've actually repaired like friendships after working with them for a while and realized that the reason why I was mad was not really that worth it so wow that's great yeah all right you also talked about learning how to filter water from the river yep setting up tents, uh, so lots of concrete skills too. So summer camp is always good. Yeah. And what are you working on here at Chapel Haven today? I'm trying to work on being more independent and not rely on prompts from staff or peers, unless, you know. Uh, and, I want, and I'm also working on getting chores done because sometimes I might, not or might have uh might not get around to it so um being able to just do things on my own without being prompted is what i want to work on uh i'm really what about cooking cooking yeah uh, i've been trying to expand the stuff that i make besides just ramen uh uh, I've made uh, homemade, well, homemade pizza. I've made brownies, um, and now I'm just kind of working with different recipes of pasta, so that's kind of fun. Um, and I want to eventually get into the, the field of computer repair, like physical um, hardware repair for computers. And I'm currently interning as the social media intern. And I post, I take pictures and they can take those and post them online on Facebook. And can you just advance this right here and we'll take, we'll take a look at one of your pictures. And this is one of the pictures I took of the campus. So this picture got a lot of love on social media and it shows, gives you a nice aerial view of our campus. Too. Yeah, I like that, I remember Seeing this, it was a sunrise. I thought it was really nice. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. Okay. Good job. And so Jack is enrolled in the Asperger Syndrome Adult Transition Program. We use the uh, acronym ASAP for that. And you heard him talking about not wanting to be too dependent on staff to prompt him and et cetera. So when you think about executive functioning, that can be a real challenge moving from high school into adulthood. And so that's a big focus area for us here at Chapel Haven. I mean, there was a question for, sorry, there was a question for Jack if he went to college. Want to come back for a second, Jack, and answer that? A question for Jack. <laughs> I hope everybody's cool with this. We're just trying to do this safely. Uh, is, did you go to college? Um, uh, trying to figure if like Maple Brook was considered. Have you gone to a university? No, mm -hmm. I have not. No. Are you going to some? No. Okay. So no. No. Say your career focus. Career focus. Okay. Good. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So here at. Chapel Haven, you can pursue college, and there are six colleges and universities right around us. Um, or you can pursue a career, or you can do both. And uh, Jack is really very skilled with uh, uh, technology, and as you can see, photography and computers, and so he has a real focus for that. Okay, uh, our next panelist is Cheney. And Cheney is also a first year student in the Asperger program. He's from T Tacoma Park, Maryland. And one of the things that he feels is important when you're moving from high school into adulthood is try to have some job experience while you're in high school. So um, Cheney. Thank you. So I was from Tacoma Park, spelled actually T-A, 
seat TAK on May. Okay. And Specifying. Tell us, tell us about your high school. And your so my experience. high school is actually about an hour away in Baltimore. So I got experience of like wait of kind of getting up early. Mm -hmm. Did you have some jobs? And there was a transition program at the school. So I got experiences like just like what were some jobs that were available? What were some of the jobs you did? Like there was one that was like hospitality mm -hmm. in a hotel near my school. Did you do some farm and weavery work? That was more in my in the college. Okay. That I came here from. And when I say college, it was more like a Rudolf Steiner based program. Mm -hmm. So do you think that having some job experience is important? It can help. But in at least in this school, we're more like like this helps me gain the independence that the other school did not. Mm -hmm. What areas do you feel like you're getting more independent with? Definitely when it comes to communicating with others in different different groups such as like kind of French it helps it's kind of helping me with friendship but also roommate friendship and then it also helps me with like in a different field like like I have friends I had friends when I was in high school but that were exactly in my age but it helped me keep those, like, learn how to move with the friendship that I had in high school to, like, a actual peer friendship. So friendship has been important, right? Yes. Okay. Let's just look at what else we wanted to say for this one. And how about some life skills that you're learning here? Due to COVID, I, had, I started using Instacart and and Peapod. Mm -hmm. And what are you learning when you're doing that? With that, I had to learn about like, oh, I need to spend this amount of money or I had to use a budget. So and it helped me because in high school, it's just like, oh, my parents, my parents will pay for that. Or I didn't really learn like, oh, this will cost this amount and this amount, like it's actually worth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no cafeteria here, right? Like you're learning no. to cook in your apartment. Yeah, there's no cafeteria, and there's way more independent cooking. Mm -hmm. So you're doing a lot of cooking, and you're you're budgeting your groceries, and you're ordering them, and staying within a budget. And then also you're doing a lot with perspective taking. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So that definitely. Definitely with the perspective taking, thanks to Sarah Davison, who's one of who's a speech pathologist. speech pathologist here. She's definitely helped me when it comes to like seeing other people's point of views. Even though a lot of people would be like, "Oh, that's easy." Actually, it's way harder than you'd think. Excellent point. Yeah. Anything else you want to give for tips or advice to people as they're moving out of high school? Definitely, I would say definitely the job experience and also experience of living away from home. For I agree with Jack on the sense that going to camp, being away from your family for, I would say at least three three weeks is relatively a good strategy when moving out of your parents' place to any school. To any college, mm -hmm. not just chapel, even. Excellent. Thank you, Jack. Janie. I mean, Janie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oops. Um. So yes, you know, Janie talked about the roommate experience, and that's a big learning curve for Chapel Haven because you don't know who you're going to get paired with, and you got to learn to get along with them. Um. Also, learning to take another's perspective. So a lot of a lot of instruction here on taking turns in a conversation, showing interest in what other people are talking about, 
Um, all of those skills are important. Okay. So our final adult panelist, and then we'll get into some other tips, is Jacob. Jacob is from New York City, and he came to Chapel Haven out of, uh, out of high school and uh, learned how to live independently. So you want to come over, Jacob? So can I start with like the, my first school like, Tell a little bit that? about your high school years. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, I, I, right after I, like, I started a high school in, in uh, Flushing, Queens, called the Lowell High, like, middle school, and then that went through like like uh, through eighth eighth grade like seventh or six through eight and then like I then went to the same high school with the same name, Lowell High School. And I like went through that like for like four other years, made a few, one extra year. And then after I graduated, I, um, then got a call like that I got accepted to uh, Chapel Haven. And Jacob, uh, while you were in high school, you went to Camp Ramah. Yeah. So you learned a little bit about how to be away from home, right? Yeah, I started, I started, actually I started sleep away camp, going to sleep away camp back in, 2004 and I then like tried it out a little I came home for maybe like a few weeks like in that same year in 2004 like like was missing home a little like not knowing like if like because I didn't have like a sort of someone that I was comfortable with like a sort of that mother type like and then I decided oh I'll go back like because like I wanted to still go away to sleep away camp so I continued after that year past going to sleep away camp for like at least a few more years up until 2011. And one of the things you told me about <clears throat> is while you were still in high school, you took some classes at JCC Manhattan, right? Yeah, I took, I took in my own, the JCC Manhattan, like some like, like, cooking classes i i actually went places like around uh the city like on the west side of like 76th street like and like did like a few things with my friends i went to high school with because they some of them did with me, a few that didn't go with me, like I met through camp. They did the, like um, the classes with me. So I was able to like figure out my, my way around like more like around 
my own neighborhood as and well. Is it true then that you had some independence while you were still in high school? Your parents let you do some stuff, right? Uh, yeah, like I, I hung out with my friends and uh, I just basically that's to the start of like, because I waited till like I came to Chapel Haven where I like just started doing things for myself. Okay. And when Jacob came to the REACH program, uh, he did a week visit. So applicants to Chapel Haven have to do a trial overnight visit. And in the case of uh, REACH, it's a six day visit. And I had just started in this job. And so when uh, Jacob got through his week visit and it was time to call him to be accepted, he was my first call home to tell an adult they had been accepted to Chapel Haven. And what, what did you say when I called you? I was, I was, I was, I, when, when Catherine called me say that I was accepted, I, it was sort of lost of words, like sort of like speechless to myself, like that I like like had really nothing to say. But after I took time to like take it all in, right before ending the the call, like I I said like. I was happy that I got accepted and looking forward to going to Chapel Haven starting like in in July. Right, but I think you said you had to think about it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I I, I so, said I said I had to think about it right. a, a little, but not too much. Not thing. too much. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, Jacob. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was my first call home, and I thought, what did I do wrong? Because he seemed so hesitant. But you know, it's it's a big step, a big leap into your next life. Uh, so we understand that. Okay, let me just check the chat here. Hello from the JCC Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Nikki Stein, do you know Nikki Stein? Mm -hmm. We're big, big fans of the JCC Manhattan. Know. So thank you so much. All right, well, our next section, uh, I would like to have Mary Rulo uh, take the seat, if you will. She is our education advisor, and she has had a long and distinguished career in education. Um, most recently, she was director of pupil services in East Haven, and she's had 34 years of experience as a teacher and administrator. So she oversees our education program, and I'm going to have her tell you a little bit about how you can work with your um, your transition team while you're still in high school. So thank you. Good morning. Um, like Catherine said, I have eons of experience in special ed. And I just wanted to talk a little bit to you about the transition process, because one of the things that's sometimes difficult for families is beginning the discussion about life after high school when your child is actually several years away from that. The transition portion of the IEP and the PPT process is designed to address the areas that will begin at age 14 and continue during the rest of the education. For students on the autism spectrum, especially that process begins at 14. There's a revised page to the one that's up there in Connecticut. So it does now say 14. And that's when the conversation starts. For most students, they're still in middle school at that point. So when you're taking a look at that part of the IEP document. And one of the things that really happens is we're at PPT meetings, you get a ton of paper. You don't always have time to look at it while you're at the meeting. And then you start to look at it later. So there are things I would point out that should attract your attention right at the beginning while you're still meeting. And 
Um, one is very important, the student needs to be invited to the PPT at that point. Not all students like to attend, but I would encourage families to encourage their students to attend meetings so that they get used to participating in the discussion. The meeting is about their choices, their feelings, and so their piece is very important. If they don't attend, it's important to let them have a voice through somebody else as to what type of things they would like to discuss. Um, there's always a place to discuss transition assessments that are starting to happen in high school and continue throughout. Um, the post-school outcome goal statement and transition service recommended becomes important to the IEP to talk about what the goal is for the student, and it may change, but as you start the discussions, you start to actually think in goals and objectives to get the student there much different at the middle school level than when they get to the high school level and when they're actually getting used to and ready to leave high school and transition out. And that piece about age 18, which is number seven, is very important. The rights to idea, the special education rights transfer to students automatically at 18, unless the family has um, taken procedures in order to change it so that they maintain guardianship. And that's very important because that impacts the PPT process and how the meetings go, who the, you know, an 18 year old student is the invitee, the parents are the guests, and it kind of changes the procedure and changes the discussions within um, the PPT itself. So those pieces are all important. Yes, I'd also like to just point out a few things on another page of the IEP. That's good. Mm -hmm. Which is um, what we call page 10, because I'm looking at a Connecticut IEP and every state has their own version of it, but the same content is covered in different places. And I, I just want to point out that the exit criteria is important. Um, and it may change, but starting at that early age of 14, you start to discuss when the student, when it's anticipated that the student will be ready to exit special education. And there are a variety of options. Some students exit because they go to regular ed and they no longer need special education services. Some exit at graduation like a typical high school program. And some grad, um, exit at age 21, which is actually right up until the day they turn 22. So the legislation shows that students have the rights, if they need it, to remain in special education um, through their school district until they actually are the day before they reach age 22. And in Connecticut, the Parents' Transition Bill of Rights is an important um, document that is, that is provided to all parents and has to be um, shared either through their website or through um, hand copy, but most schools now have it on the website and they make sure so that the parents know exactly what their rights are for secondary transition and the students know their rights too. Um, if you can just switch, I'm gonna talk about a couple of things on there. It's, it's a lengthy document, but I just want you to see what it looks like. All the documents that I'm discussing and sharing are found on the Connecticut State Department of Education website on this special education tab. So you, I, if, even if you're not from Connecticut and you're interested what some of these things look like, you can find them on the state of Connecticut website. So that's what the beginning looks like. And then it talks about the rights of students with an IEP. So you can move okay. it up, Catherine, thanks. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm letting Catherine touch it because it's her <laughs> machine and I don't want to do anything wrong here. But so students have these rights if they're on an IEP and in special ed. And this has also been updated to say at least 14 or younger, but to receive secondary transition services, which covers um, post-secondary, independent living, and vocational. Those are the three big areas that are discussed. Um, some of this comes all up right in the IEP. Number two is part of the IEP. The students have the rights to attend all PPT meetings, to state what their feelings are, and to be heard in their meetings. Um, number five talks about those post-secondary outcome goals that I was discussing from the IEP. 
based on their individual needs and interests, and that is to be discussed every year. They can receive secondary services and supports to help them meet their goals. Um, they can assist in developing the goals and objectives. And um, at that point, when we're talking about transition, there's a document in Connecticut, which I'll show you in a minute, which talks about the core transition skills that the professionals have put together to look at what skills are really um, make up an important transition program. And th that's a good list to have just even as a family to see what skills you can be working on in school and out of school. Um, there's a need to look at outside agencies if they're appropriate to be there. There's that number nine is very important to talk again, starting at 17, make sure the families understand about the transfer of rights at age 18. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Catherine. Mm -hmm. And then this is where um, programs like Chapel Haven become involved. The re request for consideration of trans transition only services after age 18. So after high school, some students are not ready to go on independently in the areas of transition. And so the family can start to have the discussions with the school system about why the student would require extra time. It's not an automatic thing. It's based on need and it's based on continued need to meet goals and objectives. And this kind of lists out for you the things that the students would have had to meet in order to have extra year. So basically when they're going into a transition only program, they've kind of met their academic needs for graduation. They've gotten their credits for high school and they're really looking at focusing on the independent living if appropriate, the post-secondary and the career opportunities for students. And this kind of lays out what the skills are. And the services that are listed under number 12, you can go to the um, Connecticut State Department of Education website and find all kinds of documents and things that are there. Um, I'm sure other states offer similar things, but I could certainly tell you, even if you're not in Connecticut to look there, there is a lot to see on that. I just want to spend a couple of minutes also just talking about the um, transition skills that the Connecticut State Department Task Force came up with. Um, and it's a, it's a short document, it's three pages and you can find it there and print it out, but it really talks about what each student with a disability should be able to do as they move through their program. And um, it just, talks really importantly about how they will take over the ownership of their education, um, their occupation, their independent living skills. And it ties in really nicely with um, the panelists that we had here as they talked about how they moved along in the independent learning pieces um, and really using those skills that they develop in those three areas to move on and be independent adults. And, you know, I was a public school person for years working in pre-K through grades 12 and overseeing that. And the thing that um, I really see now that I'm in a transition program is what happens with those skills later and how the important skill building at middle school and high school leads to a successful program later on for students. So the, those are the pieces that I want you to think about um, when you're in the PPT process, just make sure to pay attention to the transition piece starting way back in middle school years. So I thank you very much. Okay, and I'm just gonna put this slide up. Are there any questions for Mary about the school transition? Anybody have a question? Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, Mary. All right. Feel free to put anything you're wondering about in the chat, and I'm going to put my uh, email in here in case something does come up after this, and our website address, too, if you want to learn more about us. Um, so the next part of the presentation is um, just getting into some nitty gritty about life after high school. 
And what are some things that maybe you can be working on now? I don't know how many of you have young adults still in high school, but um, there's a lot that can be happening at home in the high school years. Um, some simple things are, you know, have your young adult make their own lunch uh, or get, let, let them have some practice, even making their own breakfast. Um, that's very helpful and that will be helpful no matter what they decide to do. Um, and grocery shopping is a big one too because it brings in that consumer math piece and it starts introducing young adults to what things cost. And we all know right now, food costs are through the roof, et cetera. So getting, giving them the chance, even when you go grocery shopping, give them a mini list, let them spend a little time in the grocery store finding those items um, and even maybe pricing them. You know, the stop and shop here has those, uh, what do you call them? Scanners. Yeah. Um, so it's not as math challenging as it might have once been. And it's just good to let uh, a young adult have a little autonomy with something like that. Um, Chapel Haven, our, our residential program is all apartments. So we don't have dorms here. And so our students are learning to manage their apartments. Now, of course we have evening life skills staff that are helping our adults, um, but letting your son or daughter have some chores um, and a regular schedule and an expectation that they will do those chores. Um, one of the dreaded tasks here in the apartment is cleaning the bathrooms, you know, um, and so a lot of our students never had to clean their bathrooms. Um, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to get them into that habit of doing some chores. And another big piece for us is um, community safety. And you, it, your son or daughter are never too young to start learning about that. And what do we mean by that? Not just getting around safely in the community, but for our adults, it's things like not walking around with dollar bills hanging out of your pocket, um, not making a friend on Facebook that you really don't know. Uh, learning to avoid phishing scams, you know, scams, or uh, some of our adults have had the experience of getting like an email from somebody saying, I need you to go to Walgreens and get me five gift cards from Amazon and mail them. And obviously it's a scam, but it takes some education and some learning about personal boundaries for, um, for us to know that that's a scam. So never too early to kind of teach that kind of thing, social media, especially uh, what is a friend? That's a confusing term. Um, other things that we work on are mobility. So here in Westville, it's a pretty walkable community and our adults with some um, mobility training eventually can learn to go to the drugstore or into Westville Village, but letting your young adult have some independence. And we heard from Jacob who lived Grew up in Manhattan that he would go like to the JCC and places like that. A little bit of independence walking around the neighborhood or letting them, as I mentioned, like take them to the mall, let them go check out a store that they like. Little steps of independence. Another area we work a lot on is living on a, a fixed budget and our students get a stipend of $500 a month here. They learn how to manage the banking for that. They learn to budget their groceries, their laundromat trip, their toiletries, and their social activities on the weekend. Um, and there's a lot of learning wrapped up in that. So maybe let your son or daughter make some purchases um, or maybe even start to experiment with a debit card just so that they get an idea that money is finite. We already know that, but uh, what, what do things cost? Another thing we often ask on the admissions end is, can your son or daughter stay home alone, even if it's for a couple hours or even overnight, that sort of thing. Um, and so little, little experience with leisure time management. Um, and we're, we're big on like uh, programming cell phone numbers into our adult cell phones so they know who to call if, if something comes up. But just learning to spend a little time without mom and dad hovering is always good. We do love the, the sleepaway camps um, and we love sleepovers for that very purpose. We have a comment in the chat. Your community seems very, your community seems very unique. Are there other places like yours in Connecticut, New York, Northeast? How do you find them? Very good question. 
We are unique in that we are a lifelong program. So there are programs like us out there on the landscape, um, but a lot of times they are finite. So you go there for a couple of years, you learn what you're gonna learn, and then you're back to mom and dad's house. We're lifelong, so you can come to Chapel Haven, spend time residentially, get your, I call it life 101 training. And then if you want to, you can move into our ongoing community, which we call supported living. And we have a range of different options for that. Um, so I would have to say that I don't know of a similar program to us right now in this tri-state area, but you can go on Facebook and uh, search for the network of post-secondary programs and I'll put that in the chat and that is um, a pretty good listing of programs like us uh, that you might want to check out. Um, other areas to work on during high school would be the social communication realm and that's very big for us um, as Cheney mentioned learning to take someone else's perspective how to recognize body language, facial expressions, uh, learning when somebody's sick and tired of talking about Pokemon. Um, those are all things that can happen in the early years uh, with a good speech pathologist program, a good, there's a lot of um, social outing kind of groups around where your son or daughter can get some experience. I believe the JCC of Manhattan runs those as a matter of fact. So social etiquette, just learning how to use the phone. I have to say that my son went off to college. He hates the phone. It's a very text dependent generation. And, you know, we had to learn a little bit about phone etiquette, um, problem solving, all of those things. Okay, we're sort of running out of time here and I apologize for that. But just also, as we mentioned, some seven, eight minutes, <laughs> uh, some experience with, jobs or even internships and think college. Yes, think college is a great, um, I'll put that in here too, think college. We're listed there, lots of programs listed there. So check that out. Um, considering programs, just real quickly, there are day programs uh, that you might wanna consider. Some of our families start with day programming for their graduating adult and then move into the next step. Um, there are voc rehab programs. I know OMRDD and here in Connecticut, it used to be called um, DRS, but now it's called DOORS. But anyway, it's the state vocational arm. So that's another route that's possible to go for uh, a young adult. There's non-residential -res programs that are have supports for college. Um, so here in Connecticut, Gateway Community College has a program called Step Ahead. It's not overnight, but it gets you ready. Norwalk Community College as well. Um, and then there are programs like us that would be considered post-secondary and have that 24 seven staff support. Um, another program like us would be Franklin Academy, although they're not lifelong, but they have somewhat of a similar setup. Um, so things to think about, you know, and there's also uh, colleges like Mitchell College in New London, Connecticut has a program called Thames where you live on the campus and you do some college, but you're in a uh, kind of a cloistered residential dorm setting. Um, there's also a program at the College of Charleston. So I think college is a very good resource uh, for checking all those out. What do you want to look for when you look at programs? Um, how does the program monitor success? So you wanna look at like, what's the peer group? Obviously a campus visit is always good. You get a good look at who's in the program. Is there the right peer group for your son or daughter? Um, and I guess, wow, I got to the end here. <laughs> okay, let's see. And you have a link to respond. Your program sounds terrific. How old are the oldest participants? Okay, I'm sure I got everything. And thank you for that question, Mary. So we start at age 18. And I would say that most of the adults who come into the residential programs, the REACH program, and you met Kimber and Jacob came out of that program and the ASAP program, you met Cheney and Jack, are 18 to roughly 
25, but sometimes we do get some older folks. We've had people move into REACH recently who one young man was 30. So his dad kept him home, um, kind of an involved story there, but his mother passed away. Mom was leading the search for the next program. And unfortunately she passed away of cancer. So dad was sort of suddenly in charge and doing what we're talking about here, you know, looking for the next step. So this young man came to us at age 30 but he's done really well. And now he is living in our um, ongoing community of support. Oh, and another question. We have people coming at all ages. They mm -hmm. just have to be adults, but we've mm -hmm. had people join us age 50. Yeah, in the community. Living in the community uh, and also providing support for them. So it's, um, Sometimes kind of hard to describe Chapel Haven because we're, we're so unique. I do have a question here. Thank you so much for this great presentation. Just wondering if your longer term residential programs are paid through OPWDD or the like through Connecticut. We are New York residents. So we used to be on the New York placement list. Um, yeah, but the long term ones, do they get CDS funding? Or? So if you're a long, like if you're a community member, like a Jacob or a Kimber, then you're, you, by that point, you've become a Connecticut resident and you can tap into the State Department of Developmental Services, DDS. And we have a number of clients here who have budgets from DDS um, that support aspects of their independent living. So not so much New York, though, not for long term. Yeah. And not really a tuition, just not tuition. services. It's so service based um, mm -hmm. funding. All right, are there other questions? Another message. Let's see here. It's a brave new world with Zoom. Thank you. And thank you, Jessica. I'm delighted that you joined us. Mm -hmm. I hope it was helpful. I know we had to shuffle around a lot, but I wanted you to actually meet our adults because I think. They really tell the story um, the best. And I want to thank Mary Aquarulo for all her expertise. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And we're delighted. And we thank the Westchester Institute. This has been an amazing uh, opportunity. OK, thank you so much.